So was communism, socialism, the religion of Esau? Or well, let's say it like this, was communism, what's known as communism, and socialism, also referred to as like being red, you know, red. Was communism and socialism a religion of Esau or the religion of the Edomites, a political, the political of the political religion of the Edomites, taking the biblical prophetic, you could say matrix and applying it, right, to the so-called this outer world or what people call the real world, was communism and socialism a religion, political religion of Esau and the Edomites, whether they were black, right, or white, right, black or white. And also the connection here with our roots over here in the Americas, in North America, we the black people of the world, and especially with the Ethiopian World Federation, we find it to be very, very interesting in the Malaku e Bayan, right, Malaku e Bayan, Ethiopian emissary to black America, the William R. Scott article, where it is said right here, let's point this out from the time of his return to the United States in September 1936. Now we're speaking about Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bay. And let's just make the connection right here as we ask the question as to whether communism slash socialism was a religion of Esau or a political religion of the Edomites. I think more correctly in the context we know Isau, that's the patriarch, but then we have Edom and the Edomites, right? The Edomites, the people of, of Isau, which was not just one people, because Esau, he intermarried and he intermingled with many different people. So when some say that Esau is like just a white man, no, that's not so, right? Just being the white man, right? But we also have black, right, and white down presses. As Naya Bingi one time said, depths of black and white down presses. So, was communism, socialism, aka also known as socialism, the political religion of the Edomites, right, of the, of the Marden, right, of the Marden Edomites, right? And why I say this is because it may not seem so apparent to people, but that's what's going on even over here in America, right? Liberalism adopts a lot from communism and socialist philosophy, right? And people don't recognize, especially in America, this is we as black people or black Americans don't recognize how infected we have been, right? But it really goes back to even the fascist invasion of Ethiopia and going back to like the 1930s, right? The 1930s. So we'd like to share this right here. Just pause. So here, here, here. Here we have Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, right? And here we have this article in a little book that we have published, my right? Malaku E. Bayan. Ethiopian Emissary to Black America, 1936 to 41. One of the forgotten parts of our story, of our history, especially even we as the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, especially we as Ethiopian Hebrews. Now, here, 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 I'd like to make this link right here. Let's go over here. My Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. But let's zoom in right here. Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bay. And now, interesting um, quote right there. I think it was J.A. Rogers wrote some very excellent books that we don't hear a lot of the so-called woke folk, the conscious folks, really speaking about a lot of these important works like J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line, you know, um, From Man to Superman, those particular books. But it was him through his research, and he does a lot also on the black and the Israelite and the Ethiopian Hebrew presence in Europe, too. You know, connected with all the coat of arms and the black royalty and black nobility up in Europe that has been so woefully um, maligned through disinformation amongst pseudo-conscious 
right? Pseudo conscious folks and people. Now, this is also connected with, let's bring this up as. All right, just wanted to bring up the book cover right here that I'm about to quote from right here. As we ask this particular question, right? Malaku means his angel, Emmanuel means God is with us, Bayin is like the, the sentence or decision like of a judge, right? So here, Malaku e Bayin, right? Ethiopian emissary to black America. Now here, in this particular document, on page 94, so it's a small little Batalua book right here, here, here. Here it says, from the time of his return to the United States in September 1936 until August 1937, when the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated was founded, Dr. Bayan had been working in conjunction with the United Aid for Ethiopia, which was the most active of the few remaining Ethiopian aid associations. During much of this period, and even prior to Bayan's involvement, the organization under the leadership of Reverend William Imes seems to have been performing well. In fact, one glowing report maintained that it had, quote, functioned perfectly well for a while, end quote. The situation began to change, however, as members of the American Communist Party took sharp interest in the United Aid. Remember the organizations, United Aid for Ethiopia. We're talking back in the 30s. Ain't nothing new under the sun. And attempted to transform it into a communist front. Attempted to transform it, right, into a communist, right, front. Right? Now, this is prior to the founding establishment of the Ethiopian World Federation, incorporated in 1937. Right? by black Americans, by we the black people of the world, right? We could say Ethiopian Hebrews abroad. But going on, it writes, wanting to be free of any entanglement with the Reds, whether black or white. Now this article is written by William R. Scott. And those who know like black American history should know who like we're speaking of. You can look it up. Look him up, William R. Scott, right? William R. Scott. But going on, it says, wanting to be free of any entanglement with, quote, the Reds, the, quote, Reds, end quote. Whether black or white, Bayan and others decided to form an entirely new organization to be known as the Ethiopian World Federation. So the founding of the Ethiopian World Federation back in the 1930s you see how like far-sighted ones was was to be free of the quote reds whether they were black or white non-partial whether they were black reds right or whether they were white reds the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated was founded right to be free of both the black reds and the white reds, the reds, whether they were black or white. Now, this reminds me of what ones and ones and some Rasas and ones will say, Naya Bingi and I and I, we have said, deaf to black and white down presses, non partial, right? Non partial, right? A tale of two nations. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Now, in case ones don't know that, that's Amos, right? Amos chapter 9, Amos chapter 9, verse 7. Amos 9 and 7, right there. I think it's very, very important when we ask this question concerning the political, right, Esau's or the Edomites, right, the Edomites, Esau and the Edomites, political religion, communism, question mark, socialism, right, and black people, right? We have to connect black people here because this was the first early warning we had of that. Now, remember, by this time, if you know anything about history, there was already the so-called Bolshevik, you know, um, 
revolution in Russia, how they killed the czar of Russia family, but also with the rise of that, I find it to be very interesting, was the destruction, right, of the black iconography, the black Christian iconography. A lot of that black Christian iconography we see once again, you know, nowadays, especially with, um, you know, social media, you know, with with the internet, we're able to share and, and distribute a lot of this, right? I'd like to show that as well. So with the with the rise, so with the rise of communism and, and socialism, like in Russia and the Russian Revolution, a lot of this art, right? This kind of art was destroyed, was destroyed. And and ones and ones, right? fellow Hebrews and Israelites, you know how important this art is as more proof positive of who we are, right? And who are the Israelites, right? And who were the true followers of Robeno, Yeshua HaNotz, or your Justice of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Of the Messiah. So this art, a lot of this art was destroyed. A lot of churches were destroyed. And remember that the main communism socialist agenda was anti-God or anti-religion or so-called an atheistic an atheistic philosophy. This sounds just like Esau, the spirit of Esau and Edom, right? To destroy, right? Now some of this is Ethiopian art right here, right? Some later Ethiopian art. Let's go through this right here. But you can see some of the Russian, right? The Russian iconography, right? The Russian iconography. A lot of this is Russian art. We like to look up black Russian art and Russian black icons, right? And was to destroy, right? To destroy this witness that was in that north, right? That north country up there, speaking about Russia, right? So I was speaking about, you know, whether Esau's Edomite political religion, right? And political philosophy, right? How this connects. A lot of this art, there's more art. This is just some art right here that we can easily find, right? I mean, you can clearly, clearly see, you know, when we speak about the Russian icons, right? And this is the aspect of the so-called communist, Russian, socialist um, revolution, so-called, that occurred, right, that is almost never talked about, right? It's talked about, well, the communism is a political thing, rah, 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 rah. But when you study it, you see how they were destroying churches, right? Destroying icons, and they were destroying that testimony of Israel, right? And the true early Christian presence that was black, overtly and obviously, right? In that North country known as Russia. So this is also very, very important. Now, the connection, right, with what was written concerning the Ethiopian World Federation, right? And there was the organization United Aid for Ethiopia, right? It was working perfectly well for, for a time. And then some so-called American socialists and communists began to infect it. Now we see this also with the civil rights movement too, and with generally speaking, the black movement, especially when we start to get into our nationalistic phase, you find that a lot of the black nationalists and black revolutionaries, they were getting sucked in right, by Esau's political religion, AKA communism or socialism, right? So just was moving out of right here, 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 because we'd like to share this now. It's not a leap, right? It's not a far leap, right? When we then look at the so-called Ethiopia situation, right? Let's let's point out a few things right here. This book, we actually got this book right here, right? This is the class and revolution in Ethiopia. So that godless and creeping coup, right? The godless and creeping coup or what the Bible calls in Psalm 19, right? I think it's verse 16, the great transgression that rebellion against the king of kings was also prompted, inspired, and motivated right, by this very same satanic, communist, socialistic, blah, 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 right? As we can see right here, you see what's going on? Now, this is, this is post-conquering line of the tribe of Jews. This is after, this is after, right, the great transgression. 
right? Let me just bring that up because people might not know what I'm referring to right there when I talk about the great transgression. Let's bring this out right here and let's go right here, right? And let's go to great. Let's put great, right? And let's put trans, um, the great transgression. Yes, it's transgression. The great transgression, right? Let's look it up right there. Great transgression, right? Where it says in Psalm, actually, um, sleek up, sleek up. my bad. I said 16, but actually it's Psalm 19, verse 13. Keep back thy servant, thy body up. Now, I use that body up proudly because for some Ethiopians, that might mean slave or dark-skinned black person. But in the linguistic, the language, it basically means servant. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Remember, it's Obadiah that has that prophecy against Esau and Edom. Right? And Obadiah, Obed, Obed, Ebed means servant. But if you go to the, you know, so-called Arab world, the Middle East, the Islamic world, and Ebed, Abed is often like a dark-skinned black, like say like a nigger or a negro, in other words. Right? But here it says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now, in the Sefer Tehillim, my, in the Hebrew Psalter, it's interesting that in a, a Targum, in the footnote, it says the great transgression is rebellion against the king of kings. So what do we see in Ethiopia in the rebellion? We see that rise of the hammer and sickle. Look at Revelation prophecy about the hammer and sickle, right? That hammer and sickle. Here's some actual, this is Mangustu, Mangustu, a whole Edomite connection, whether black or white, right? Whether black or white, the butcher, known as the butcher of Addis Ababa, whether black or white, right? The prophecy, the destruction, right? Here, 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 you know, this here is saying, Yal Tenegre Tari, you know, that history that is, um, you know, not told, the untold history, right? Imnet, the faith, right? Hagar, Maudet, right? That love of one's country, the tin beat, the prophecy, and the tifat, the destruction, right? So here we have the connection of Mengistu, right? Mengistu, tin beat, Yemiya, Meslu, Kala, Toch, right? And this is what was going on back in, you know, the godless and creeping coup against Hadassah Selassie with the Keolis Ethiopians, right? That eventually led, right? That eventually led to what we have here, like Lenin and all the rest of these, these guys, these kooks, right? But let me just show you some more right here, 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 right? These are books you might come across. The Ethiopian Revolution and the Struggle Against U.S. Imperialism. Right? You got to peep this right here. Right? Don't get caught up on slogans, but know the truth. Right? Yeah. Right? This is what they say. The revolution. The Ethiopian rebellion. It was not a revolution, but it was a rebellion. But note the communistic connection. They took the Lion of Judah off the flag. Right? And notice today, they have a star on the flag. Right? They have a star on the flag. This is some of the historical... Right, the historical of the time, what was going on. Notice how they put right here. You see, they took the line of Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah off the flag, and the, and it's the plain flag with the green, yellow, and red, green at the top, right? And then the red and yellow flag, right? And a lot of our people, look, they're actually carrying a sickle. They mean business, and they meant business, right? If you study the history, you'll know, right, what we mean. Right? The bloodshed. Right? The bloodshed. Right? That was going on. Right? But this was all in the wake of the rebellion against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Right? We call it our Israelite king. Right? The king of Israel is anointed and coronated title. We're going to bring more proof forward for those who, who, who don't know. Right? The truth. Right? A heretical revolution. Notice that a heretical revolution. Why say what is heresy? A heretical revolution. This is why it says in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12, ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. What is the sword of Yahweh? The sword is the word, right? That prophecy. I want to show you this right here. 
You see this right here? Right? So he went against the anointed, right, king of Israel, the king of kings of Ethiopia, right? The power, the first power of the Trinity, and they brought in a pseudo Trinity, right? We could say the devil's Trinity, right? The Esau's political, religio, you know, political, you know, religious or, or, or religious political Trinity, right? Marx, Engels, and Lenin, right? Marx, Engels, and Lenin, right? And notice how they did these things. They're proud of these things. Have they repented yet, right? For that evil seed, right? Now, this is interesting right here, 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 right? This is the Rastafari people with the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Notice, right? We defend the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We're talking about a tribe. There's many tribes, right? In Ethiopia and even in Africa. But we're speaking about the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Right? So this is a very important part of our story, of our history. So that's why I asked the question whether communism, socialism is Esau's, right? Is Esau's um, religion, like a political religion, right? An anti-God religion, right? So notice right here, this is Ethiopia, right? And notice when they, they had big statues, you see the song? They had big statues. We show you the Trinity, right? And what was that, Mescal Square? They had the big posters, right? And here's Mengistu. Now notice, this is still in the early days. So a lot of the symbology, right, of the line of the tribe of Judah, right? And we, right, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah and Beta Israel is still was still evident. As we can see, our unique star of david the original the true this is how in ancient times how we did our star of david i want one to recognize some of the symbolic you know knows what he's doing he's throwing this bottle he's making proclamation so forth and so on now we can get into the detail of the derg right of that committee right what actually went on right who was really involved you know in it and how we come to today and now how they try to throw shade on the king of kings we're going to address all of that how they try to throw shade right on the israelites right and the judahite presence right in that land prophetic land and with ethiopia this man was born there right so you got to understand these connections right notice even the flag you see the flag Right now, the Tigra right are under the spotlight, right? But it goes deep, brothers and sisters, right? It goes very, very deep because that rebellion against the King Messiah. We see what happened, and what did they turn to? They turned to Red Esau, right? He saw, we saw Esau. Before we sum up right here with this, we we'll call this the intro right here. Check this out. Let me let me try to read through the red. Right? It says disinformation and propaganda are essential parts of warfare today. Communist revolutionaries regard the information war. Again, communist, socialist, political, Edomite revolution. They regard the information war as key to winning hearts and minds. You've heard a lot of hearts and minds, or at least creating enough confusion that people don't know what to do or who to fight when they are being attacked isn't this what we witness mine right? both at, at 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 home right and and abroad right or on the continent and even in ethiopia right and in other parts right of the afro asia region and then also over here abroad and even in South and Central America, right? Because we also have Israelites down there as well. Aren't we all black Americans now, right? Aren't we all, whether in North America or in South America or the Caribbean, which is also part of the Americas. So disinformation and propaganda are essential parts of warfare today. And communist revolutionaries regard the information war as key to winning hearts and minds. We can see as the godless and creeping coup 
the rebellion against the king of kings occurred right in Ethiopia with the careless Ethiopians. That's the reason for Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 12 for situations just like that, right? Or at least creating enough confusion that people don't know what to do or who to fight when they are being attacked. And we can see right here that a whole classroom. Notice they have their three gods. Notice how they do that. They have their pseudo trinity. Marx, Engels, and Lenin. Note that right there. And who do you see in the classroom? Right? They thought they were getting away from religion, but they were getting into another kind of religion, the Edomite religion, right? right? That godless, atheistic religion. Esau in the Bible. Have you ever heard Esau in the Bible ever call upon God in the Bible? Think about it. Think about it. It is ironic that so many Russians and Africans right, have held Marxist beliefs because Marx himself despised the Slavs and the blacks who they regard as slaves. See how that work out? Slavs and slaves. So it's ironic that so many Russians, remember we show you, and you can look up the black Russian icons that once again are kind of resurrecting. My, uh, getting into circulation again like what you mean even these people if they were so-called white skinned people they had black and beautiful icons right of 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 men of the madonna the black madonna and child and and the the followers of yeshua and yeshua himself and the people of the bible up there that's what they was trying to destroy in the Russian Revolution after they killed the royal family, the Tsars. That's what was going on right there. So let's just seal up right here for right now. This is like a first, hopefully, installment in this. But it's asking a question. What do you think about this concerning Esau's political religion and also the use of the color red? Now, we're not against the color. Don't think we're saying the color is a bad color or it's Satan's color. No. But it's a use of this color and then the the connection of Red and Esau and the Edomites. Edomni, Edomni, right? Esau, he wanted that red, red pottage. And for that red, red pottage, what did he do? He sold, right, his birthright. Is this what the careless amongst our people have also done and continue to do? So look at the connection we made with 1930s. Right? The connection of 1930s, right? And the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right? right? Of having no connection. Let's get this right here. Let's read this once again. Wanting to be free of any entanglement, right? Entanglement. And getting caught up in a trap, right? With the, quote, reds, end quote, whether black or white. Notice the Russians, one might say they are white and the Africans are black. So look at the irony here, right? The irony here, right? That so many, right? And we say the Africans on the continent, but also black people out here under this new liberalism, right? And getting caught up, getting caught up, right? In the so-called Democratic Party and the liberal agenda, right? With black people. In fact, there's a lot of, you hear a lot of ones talking about social socialistic policies in America even today. Think about that for a moment. But they hold these Marxist belief because Marx himself despised the Slavs and the blacks. And isn't it even more ironic that the blacks right, were called slaves.